Okay, after many requests, I'm finally producing the long-awaited disassembly video for the iBook G4. Um, before you get started, you're going to need at least these three tools. You're going to need a T8 or T9 Torx driver. Um, some iBooks use the T8, some use the T9. There's no way to know. Uh, you're also going to need a very uh, fine-tipped Phillips screwdriver. Um, then you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver with uh, just a little bit bigger. Uh, so you basically two uh, Phillips screwdrivers. I wish I knew the exact size on them, but I don't. You're also going to need something like this to store all the different screws in because there are going to be a lot of them. And believe me, if you don't um, organize these screws when you take them out, you will never figure out where to put them back together again correctly. And, you know, that's one of my biggest pet peeves uh, when I work on laptops that other people have worked on. I'll find missing screws, screws crammed in the wrong holes, uh, etc. And the best way to avoid that is to have something up front that you can organize the screws in so that you don't get them mixed up. I would also like to point out that unfortunately um, the iBook G4 comes in many variations starting at 800 megahertz all the way up to you know 1.42 gigahertz they come in 12 inch 14 inch this video is going to be showing a uh, iBook G4 it's going to be the 1.33 gigahertz uh, 12 inch um, if you watch this video you could probably use it to take apart some of the other models but I can't guarantee it because they're all just ever so slightly different. There's slightly screws in slightly different places, slightly different sizes of screws, etc. But uh, they're all very similar. Uh, so if you can follow this, it'll probably work for you on uh, the other models as well. Let's get started. Okay, to get started, turn the iBook over and remove the battery using a coin. Next, you'll need to pop these little feet off the bottom using a small screwdriver. Once you have all three of them out, remove the screws and these little metal housings. Next, take out the three center screws. Some iBooks use T8 and others use a T9 Torx driver. Next, remove these two screws inside the battery compartment. Okay, I think we need to take just a small break here. And uh, please understand the part coming up next is very difficult and it's not for the faint hearted. However, it's not impossible. And if you just take your time, uh, you'll get through it. Opening the bottom case of an iBook G4 is probably the most difficult uh, piece of maneuvering you'll ever have to do on any kind of laptop repair. Um, <laughs> of any laptop I've ever worked on, the iBook G4 is the toughest. And now, um, I'm going to show you how to unsnap all the little hidden snaps it has in there. You're going to need a flat tip screwdriver. Uh, some people use a spudger. I have tried and tried and I've never been able to get a spudger to do jack diddly for me uh, on disassembling an iBook G4 so I still use a flat tip screwdriver. Uh, it will not dent the plastic if you are gentle uh, and no matter what you do, do not ever rotate the screwdriver in an, eff in an effort to pry the plastic apart because first of all it won't work and second of all it'll just dent the plastic so don't do it. Don't ever rotate or twist the flat tip screwdriver while you're trying to uh, to get the plastic. Watch exactly how I do it. And if you don't get it right the first time, just sit back. Because I'm going to make this look real easy because I've done this thousands of times. So just, um, just if you can't get it right the first time, just take a deep breath. Go back. Just, just be gentle. You'll eventually figure it out. Okay, start by squeezing the two sides and lifting this corner up. Once you do this, keep pressure on the plastic and don't let go. Next, pop out this little clip. Now, while holding pressure, there are three snaps to pop out along the front of the laptop. Watch exactly how I do them.
Now there are three more snaps over the optical drive. These are the most difficult to do, so watch carefully. I usually put the laptop in my lap in order to get to these. There's one. There's two. And there's three. Next, let's go to the opposite side, and there are two snaps there. Now let's go to the rear of the laptop. There are a total of four snaps, two on each side. Congratulations, you're through the hardest part. Now you can lift off the cover. Remove these little springs for the battery. Okay, next remove these two screws in the battery compartment. Next, flip the laptop over and open the screen. Unlock the keyboard if it's locked. Then grab these little release latches and pull the keyboard up. Loosen the four screws on the memory cover and then grab the ribbon cable and pull up to disconnect the keyboard. You'll need to remove this magnet. Using the flat part of a screwdriver is the easiest way. Then you can remove the screw underneath. Ironically, this often requires a magnet to get the screw out. Next, remove these last six screws holding the top cover down. Okay, next put the laptop on its side and locate the power connector. Watch this little trick. The top cover should pop off now, but there are three cables you'll need to disconnect. And the last thing to do is remove about 15 little screws from the top RFI shield. Since this particular machine needed a new hard drive, I'll show you how to remove it. Basically, these four screws, and then two screws over the interface. And there you have it. You'll need to remove these little brackets. And watch how I remove this little interface adapter. When you go to reassemble the laptop, make sure you put the RFI shield back on the left side first. Make sure you get the left side down under the little metal lip here. The most common mistake I've seen is people trying to cram this thing back on from the top down and that just bends it to pieces.